Okay, this is uh, Steve Burrow. I'm the, the instructor for today's session. The, um, yep, got to get rid of this first. If it'll let me end the show. The um, two assignments that are due this week are a discussion board and your, um, your uh, mastery timeline. So we'll go through both of those uh, during the session. Uh, I'm going to actually pull up what it is you see, so we'll just so you can't say I'm making this stuff up. So the uh, discussion board is going to is uh, the idea is to gain an understanding of your personal development and and uh, how Robert Greene can help you uh, with understanding uh, the mastery of your program. Uh, tomorrow night the uh, first posting is due, and then you have a second posting a response to another person. That's going to be on there. So the goal of this particular assignment is to watch the, the Robert Greene uh, video that he has posted here, uh, read chapter six in the mastery book, and then um, uh, in two to, four, two to four paragraphs, put together uh, three concepts from the textbook talking about attaining, your, attaining mastery. The... Um, Final post that you do is uh, again a response to a classmate, and again those interactions are very important to us because uh, you're going to be dealing with people the rest of your lives. So might as well get used to working with people in your field. And uh, one thing I learned when I came to Full Sail is that uh, people in different groups are very different, and you have to uh, learn to understand them. And so. It's always good to have a good, have interaction with other people in the class because you never know when you might uh, need them for a, a project in the future, uh, and it's good to to have that interaction so you can build that relationship. Uh, but again, respond to a classmate that hasn't uh, received a response in the past from you. Uh, reference a key point in the video or text that uh, adds to your classmate's post. Again, read their post and make some comments and again all time all the time make sure your resources are cited the problem we run into especially in our in our business and we um, we multiply this in in our program because full sale is a for-profit school uh, anything we do is not covered under the nonprofit uh, exemptions for uh, for using material so we push as, as hard as uh, <coughs> we push you to make sure everything we do is prop <coughs> excuse me properly cited, <coughs> and um, if we use it, we have permission. Um, and so those are the kinds of things you need to start thinking about. I remember having a professor when I was in graduate school who said, um, uh, "You know nothing. Cite everything. Uh, that way, when you uh, get your degree, people will." cite you but uh, you got to get the degree first and so again it's great to have ideas but uh, you have to think about uh, where they come from and again if even if you're you're influenced by somebody it's always good to cite them um, because it gives them credit just like you would want to get credit when they cite you in the future so the the um, um, discussion board is mostly on your <coughs> excuse me on your input sorry i'm getting over a cold um, but the category exam is what you brought to the table uh, in the discussion with your colleagues and again we're going to read we read every one of them and uh, try to uh, try to figure out exactly what you're trying to get across to us and uh, you know and again you we look at your response and looking at how you've built on what they've done that's 20 20 percent uh your thinking in other words how you're using the information that you found you know how you've applied it to your particular your particular situation and those of your colleagues and uh just make sure there's consistency and continuity the the one thing that i uh that really bothers me when i grade things is when i get multiple fonts or i get uh ideas that don't get developed in other words people switch ideas in the middle of sentences 
just remember the people that are reading it don't know how you think or what you do. And so you've got to lay it all out for them. So again, make sure your discussions are reasonable and that you support it with uh, good sources and you do cite those sources. Because like I said, until you're the person with the degree, you know, you want to try to try to, you know, promote that uh, you should that everything needs to be quoted. And um, we have a staff member on our program, Cassie, who's our uh, intellectual property person. And uh, if you ever get her, you'll uh, this will get pounded into your head. So expect to uh, expect to cite your sources and pick some good sources. Uh, be able to qualify them. You know, I I look. You know, I you know everybody loves Wikipedia. In fact, if you look at the stats, people say Wikipedia is your is the one that most uh, young people go to. Problem is, is Wikipedia can be changed by anyone. So, are the sources good or not? You know, I, I the only time I I use Wikipedia is to find out what other people who other people quoted to post stuff onto Wikipedia. And then I use those sources rather than Wikipedia as a source. So think about, you know, again, are you using the right sources? Are you using good sources? Are they ones that are um, applicable? And again, I tell my own students, I said, find somebody who believes in you or, or believes in the way you're trying to go or understands the way you're trying to go, even though they may be against the mainstream, they still can be uh, considered an expert. And so go out and find that, you know, that person that wants to go down the same path you do, even though it may not be the, you know, the path most, most, most traveled. So sources and resources, and then your presentation and style again, language. Uh, this last time I had a number of people that had spelling errors and today, <coughs> excuse me, with the software that's out there, there's really very little reason to have um, spelling errors. So again, read through what you did. <coughs> if need be, have um, friends uh, proofread for you. Again, you know you've got a big group in your in your group, so don't be afraid to to ask them for help. <laughs> Grammarly, yeah, I, I've had a couple of people use Grammarly. I'm, you know, I, and I and I and I agree. You 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 really need to. Um, check what you're doing and uh, uh, especially with the <coughs> excuse me with the <coughs> with the universities <coughs> excuse me the way they are today um, you have to really watch watch your, your grammar and punctuation in fact I've had business plans I've watched them get thrown out of meetings because of uh, misspelled words or uh, you know uh, Bad. Well, we, I, we get a lot of inter, we get a lot of international students. We get very strange grammar sometimes, but it still has to be it still has to make sense. Yeah, I, I find it. I, I I I like I said. I tend to use the um, Excel or Turnitin, um, and I use Turnitin mostly to see if uh, my thinking is like anybody else's. And uh, in either of those cases, they they seem to work. Yeah, and uh, you know, like I said, and, you, and again, you have to find the tools that work best for you. But this is your discussion. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, two posts. Just make sure you hit all the all the buttons. You know, um, watch the video. Do your three concepts because we'll be basically looking for the concepts. Anytime you see something like it says cite three concepts, number them. You know, you know uh, we read, you know, a lot of these things and uh, to think about how you can help the reader, you know, and if you're, you know, I, I get, I get these big long paragraphs sometime and I go, what's in it? And if I've got to pick the stuff out, I got to work too hard. And, you know, uh, people in, in the investment business, which is what I work with, they're looking for reasons to throw things away. Don't give them those reasons. Help them out. Help them understand that this is what, you know, if they say they want a piece of information, give it to them. You know, yes, you may have your own way of doing it, but give them what they want if you want to make them happy. Because they're the ones that you have to make happy. It's not you, it's them. 
you make yourself happy after you get your degree, you can make yourself as happy as you want to be. But um, just remember who your audience is, who it is that you're writing to. Okay. Well, that was the first assignment. The second assignment, I got to do something here. Okay. The second assignment, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, there it goes. The second assignment is the, um, is the uh, journal timeline. And in this one, you're going to basically put 12 slides together and talk about the 12 classes that you have. Now, in my class, uh, students have to compare what they wrote in the mastery program with what they learned in my class. And the goal we have is, is that they match up. But they don't always. But you have to think about what is it that I want to get out of each of the classes. Because, you know, there's a saying out there, if you don't know where you're going, you're already there. And that's what uh, I tell the class all the time. You have to have a direction that you're going in. Otherwise, you're, you're already where you want to be. So, you know, think about what goals you're trying to achieve in each of the classes. Write them down. They may match. They may not when you get to the class. <clears throat> but the idea is, is to is to set some goals uh, and then like it's, it's like it's saying here in each of the course listings on each of the slides tell me what the course is three goals that you want to achieve and then what is your strategy per goal in other words how do you plan to achieve that um, you can like they they were mentioning here that you know, it could be a reference to the library. It could be a tactic. Uh, it could be that you're going to do interning. There's lots of things you can do to reach your goals. Um, but again, you have to list at least three goals. And again, bullet them out. Now, on these slides, remember, you're, you're an entertainment business school. So make sure that um, you're, you're uh, entertaining us. You know, don't just throw stuff up on a slide and send it to me. I mean, I can, you know, I can get those all day long, but tell me your story. I remember uh, when I was in college, I had a student come to me and say, I'm in the photography business. Uh, I've got to do a thing for class. I need to talk about 12 students, but, I, but none of them can be in the picture. So they had us gather up, you know, little, little things we had in our room and arrange them so they could take a picture to learn about that person. You know, my background in animal science, I had a, I had a, you know, a stuffed pig and I had uh, uh, cuts of meat, you know, fake cuts of meat, I, all kinds of things that told my story. <coughs> and that's what you're trying to do with, the, with your slides is tell them what you're trying to achieve, but also entertain them a little bit. You know, not just, you know, throw stuff up on a slide because and, you know, meet the requirements. Give us a little bit extra. You know, again, that presentation is, uh, you know, what gets you to the, you know, to the end. In fact, um, we do presentations in the final of our class. And uh, one thing we always tell them is, you know, your slides need to tell the story, but at the same time, they're not going to dis distract from you. So it's going to tell, but so you're going to be telling everybody about you, but at the same time, you're going to tell them what is, what are your particular goals? You need to tie the two together. So in the course listings, uh, you're, most of you, well, all of you have 12 classes, um, include the name of the course, three goals, at least one strategy or tactic to achieve the goal that you expect to have, you know, what are you going to learn? Uh, who are the leaders in your industry? <coughs> Excuse me. Who are the leaders in your industry? Um, identify and provide that contact information. And again, you did some of these in the last assignment. The um, what clubs or organizations do you think you'll belong to? Uh, you know, we have clubs clubs here on campus for just about everything. Um, as well as there are other organizations that, you know, I belong to chambers of commerce and economic development groups and such, which uh, Enterprise Florida down here, um, which uh, help businesses uh, uh, be successful. And that's really what my job is. 
And so again, think about all the different different things you could do to re to achieve those goals. So uh, clubs and organizations, <coughs> you have a you have a personal learning network which you started setting up with your Feedly and <coughs> and uh, your other other th <coughs> things on your platform. Sorry. Um, the full cell community. Uh, think about how you can uh, engage with your classmates, and instructors again uh, for the online on ground students. That's a little different than than those of you that'll be online. Um, the mentor qualities. What are you going to look for in a mentor? And then uh, put a timeline together. Uh, you know, visually what your um, what your 12 months will look like, and what each one will look like, and and a key point in each. So you're basically writing a summary. Second. Now the content's enough. You don't need speaker slides, speaker thing. I mean, basically they should stand alone. That's the idea. Um, when you get down, and if you wanted to do you know voiceover i would i would consider that a extra extra step which i would like if you wanted to explain something specifically you know tell me why you wanted to or if you, you know, i had a i had somebody one time do uh, who was doing uh, character voices and so in each of the classes he was thinking of a different character he he portrayed it as a different character and uh, actually did a voiceover with that uh, fake voice and it was kind of cool and again, you're trying to entertain us too. You know, we're, we're trying to get the information across, but at the same time, you, you want the person to kind of feel what you're doing, feel that you're doing the right thing. Um, so again, that timeline, again, create a visual representation of your 12 months, and then uh, one slide for your, um, for your resources. Now you're supposed to be posting this up to your mastery journal, your uh, Tumblr link, and uh, there's explanation here. We can go through that. But the uh, timeline is uh, when the full thing's done, you're you're going to upload each page to the mastery journal uh, and send it to your instructor as one file. Um, but uh, as it mentioned here, you may have to screenshot the pages. Those of you that have a Mac. Uh, shift command four will turn on your screen grab and you can create a box and grab them and stick them stick them up as uh, as uh, graphics if you have to um, um, but the most most part uh, they usually can take those as as pgn or or jpegs um, but those get that need to go up to your journal again provide a link to your tumblr uh, then this inspirational note uh, post your final inspirational note to your mastery and offer the mastery course. Remember, this can be a quote, image, reflection, and you're going to put that into your mastery journal. So again, an, a, another inspirational quote. I know a lot of you have done some kind of interesting ones. I've I've enjoyed I've enjoyed looking at the uh, mastery journals. Uh, for resources, again, the keynote. You can use keynote, uh, PowerPoint, or pretty much anything uh, that you think we would have. You know, the only problem is, is I've had people have really neat tools, but unfortunately, if I don't have it, I can't look at your product. You know, you've got to, it's got to be in a, either a keynote or a PowerPoint format. And I think that's pretty much what uh, they've told you. And we can view it on your, on your um, uh, mastery journal if you want us to, but for the most part, uh, I, I just prefer, prefer it all in one file. Um, but in some of the resources, the keynote um, uh, from outline to presentation, there's an example in your in your uh, assignment. Uh, there's a Linda resource, um, and uh, if you're using different presentation programs, you just need to make sure that uh, we can we can see see what it is that you're doing. Uh, Prezi and PowerPoint are pretty easy to are easy easy presentation systems. I've had people use like um, some of the uh, avatar programs and where the avatar basically told the story. Again, if you're, you know, if, if you're a film or a graphic artist or something like that, you know, show off your skills. You know, I like to see that kind of stuff, you know, because otherwise I've got, you know, I'm looking, I, I'm look, even though I only have like eight students in my group, 
it's nice to get entertained. You know, I can I can say, well, yep, you checked all the things off, so you'll uh, you know do well on it. But at the same time, part of the exercise is is you've got to keep the people entertained, and that's what I that's what I look for. Uh, you like I said, it's you just make sure that you you know get all of the things in there that need to be there. You know, people get creative and then they forget stuff. So just make sure you have a little checklist of your own to make sure that all of these eight points get covered. Um, so the deliverable, you have to do 12 slides. You have to upload those to your mastery journal and uh, send us the link or you can upload the uh, slides to us. Uh, do your inspirational post to your mastery journal again. Make sure we have the link. Uh, and your final slides need to go to FSO. So. Uh, this is, um, uh, I'm not sure what he meant by this in from this presentation. It's not recorded, but uh, upload your final slides to FSO so that we can look at them uh, for grading purposes. But you have to provide us with a, with a link to the, to the uh, Master Journal. Uh, so uh, the final presentation. Yeah, there's only, what you have to have is 12 slides for the, um, for the deliverable. And then the, um, um, let's see what they say here. Um, it says, uh, use the, but you, you're going to be including all of these other points, but it's, but you're limited to 12 slides. So try to get everything onto 12 slides. And, and um, if you need um, extra, you know, if you need an extra page for, if you don't want to put your references on the same slide, um, I have no problem with you adding adding a adding a slide, um, but the idea is is to try to try to limit it to the twelve slides for the uh, for the deliverable. So you'll have one for each of your each of your classes. Um, so the twelve slides come up. The um, well, go to your master journal, the insp new or inspirational post, and then uh, send a copy of the of the slides to FSO so that we uh, can look at them and, and then also a link to your uh, Tumblr. Um, go through the grading rubric real quick. The goal strategies and tactics. Uh, again, the main points are summarizing your mastery journal in each of the 12 courses. So again, pick your three goals for each of the courses. Tell me something about them. Uh, you know, what sources you're going to, and again, this is what answering kind of what Robin was asking, which is that you kind of put it all onto one slide. Thing is, is that with presentation slides, you know, you're 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 not presenting it, so you can kind of put a little bit more on there than you would in a normal presentation, because usually you want them focused on you rather than the slides. But they're asking you to uh, put in, you know, put in your sources and your topics and your and such. Uh, that you're planning to, you, that you want to use in each of those to, to approach each of those uh, um, each of those goals. Uh, do your research again. You can use the full cell library now. Somebody had asked about getting into the library, and I know you can go through Connect. I use uh, OCLC.com. That's a uh, link that kind of gets you into EBSCO. I don't know if you've ever seen that or not. Um, but I think it's OCLC.com will uh, jump you into, let me make sure, uh, if, I don't, if I don't do it right, OCLC, OCLC, there, OCLC.FullSale.com uh, will, will jump you into EBSCO, the online database, so that, that is a shortcut you can use. Um, but um, well, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to you know search for them on LinkedIn, or and again you don't have to talk to them. Just say this: these are the people I want to get a hold of. Most of your uh, instructors will have contacts that they're going to use in class. That should help you out. Um, at the same time, they're going to want you to look at who are the um, experts that you think are in your in your particular area. Uh, of, of, uh, yeah, that you that you want to study. How do you get a hold of them? 
you know, we cold call. <laughs> a lot of them we cold call. Or, and again, if you use full sale or you say you're a student, you'd be surprised how many will give you some time. Um, you know, we, we use them in class all the time. Unfortunately, we do this every month. And so they get tired of us after a while. So you need a pretty good, uh, a pretty good bench of people. But, um, you know, most, most professionals are, got, didn't get there by themselves. And they understand that, um, um, no, you can use pretty much any type of timeline that you want. You can use um, uh, one that's out there that somebody else uh, put together. I've seen a couple, all kinds of them, but most people just draw their own. Um, but uh, yeah, I, have, I, I, I don't know what specific one, if they want one or uh, which specific one they might want or not. But uh, all I look for is that you're, is that you have uh, a breakdown of, each of the classes with uh, with uh, uh, you know what you want to achieve in that uh, in that part, but you can use pretty much any any one that we that you can put into the slide uh, will work as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but but again, research you can use the uni university. Um, you can use uh, you know there's lots of lots of resources. I mean you got you guys have the web. When I was in school, we didn't have the web. In fact, we didn't even have calculators. So it was a I am old, yes. Um, we didn't even have calculators, so it was uh, different, you know, different. In fact, I didn't know there were any other burrows in the world until the web came along, and all of a sudden there's this Thai burho, and there's this burho in Chicago that won a national award for science. And and it's it's interesting because I assume that there wasn't anybody um, out there that, you know, I had, a, I had a unique name my whole life until, I, until the web came. Um, the, but again, industry connections, you know, if you can find, again, I use uh, LinkedIn for that. The industry involvement, think about your, um, your PLN and, um, you know, where, what clubs or organizations or professional groups you might want to join. I know my uh, cousin's a storyboard artist in, um, in Hollywood, and he belongs to. Uh, well, he's a he goes he he gets the VIP passes for Comic Con, and he uh, belongs to a, a union for uh, storyboard artists. And then there's a, um, uh, uh, of course, he belongs to like like uh, a type of SAG where they find jobs. Um, he belongs to groups that feed him that that use storyboard artists because uh, again, most of your trade groups. Uh, people that service those groups also can join them. And so it's very interesting. Uh, yeah, you just get their info, Robin. Uh, and uh, uh, I can't pronounce that. Uh, uh, that's, uh, uh, again, you're not having to actually contact them. Just see what, you know, we just want you to, to look for some of their contact information. It's interesting what you can find. I remember, I, I remember, um, I was mad at uh, DirecTV, and um, so I uh, was trying to find the president of AT&T. And I got online and started keyword searching, and somebody had his home phone number. And it was posted up on the web. I called, and guess who answered the phone? It was the president of AT&T. Guess who got help the next day? Me, because I got to the boss. <laughs> But again, you don't have to con you don't have to contact them. Well, you know, and unless you really want to, you, know, you may start saying, you know, I'm look, I'm a new student. I'm interested in what you're an expert in, and you know, can can you give me a little bit of time? You know, again, most of these people did not get where they are without mentors, and so they're going to be w more than willing to uh, give you. Most of them are going to be more than willing to give you some time. Um, as long as not everybody beats up on them. Um, the mentor, again, who do you think are your leaders in your field? Uh, visual representation, again, make it engaging. Think about uh, wh what visually you can show, what kind of pictures, what type of, what type of uh, events you can, you know, throw uh, uh, stories in there or uh, events or examples. 
Um, but again, just don't make it words, you know, because again, words are boring. Um, either will do. Um, if you if you just have a uh, email or a phone number or a, 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 even the company they work for, uh, any of those would uh, show that you made some effort to uh, to find them. The um, <coughs> excuse me. So again, try to <coughs> make it interesting. Uh, profession professionalism and research citations. Again, anytime you use pictures, quotes, where'd you get them? You know, people go, well, I got it off of, uh, you know, a free photos thing. I still give them a footnote because now if somebody else wants that picture, they know where they can go to get it. Um, so again, you know, as, as you said, as I said, when I was in graduate school, my professor told me, you know, nothing, you know, you quote everything. You know, or and then when you're when you're when you're uh, you know rich and famous, you people are going to quote you. But you have to give everybody credit for what they do. And you know, I've not used stuff because I haven't been able to find sort of <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I um, but but at the same time, you know, I'll tell you a little story. I had a I had a student in my class that had uh, night launches of the space shuttle. And uh, this was back probably 10 years ago here on campus. He would go out and film them. And he says, what do I do with them? And he goes, I said, well, let's find some stock photo places. So we did. First question they asked was, how'd you shoot it? Because he shot it for himself, not for somebody to buy. And as soon as the guy saw it, he said, I can't use it. He says, the technology you use to film this is two generations above what every TV station does. It says they would love to use it, but we'd have to dumb it down to the point where it would probably be, be it wouldn't be worth uh, selling to them. He says, but if you had bought a, you know, a two-year-old camera and shot it, I could have sold it. And it was just very interesting because you have to know what the customer wants. That's who you're making happy. You know, in case of a class, you're making the instructor happy. He's your He's your customer. You know, I've had people send me business plans and go, well, it's it's a great business plan. I go, yes, but it's not what I asked for. You know, I asked for this, 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 and this. You gave me that, 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 and that. So you get nothing, 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 nothing. Because I asked for something. If you don't give it to me, whether it's in business or in school or whatever, you know, you haven't you haven't fulfilled the assignment. Yes, it's great. But it's not what people ask for. You got to give people what they ask for. That's why we give you rubrics. That's why we give you, you know, outlines. Because this, you know, when you get out in the real, you get, you know, and most of you are in the real world probably, but when you're out in the real world, people say, this is what I want. Not, what can you give me? They say, this is what I want. And you give them what you want or you don't get paid. You know, that's, that's the bad part of that is they can say, well, I'm not going to pay you. Uh, that gets a little touchy sometimes. But anyway, professionalism, research citations. Again, anything that you research, just remember where you got it and tell us where you got it. And you can, like it says, you can have a reference page sl uh, slide if you want. That'll be your 13th slide. Grammar and punctuation, of course. Um, one thing I always warn people about is don't use all caps. Uh, one thing I learned very quickly is that um, the uh, spellers don't work very well with all caps because they're not sure if it's a name or unfortunately lawyers love all caps and I'm always I always correct my lawyer um, but those are um, but just uh, think about think about when you put things on there make sure that uh, you check it I've had um, you know you know, it, it, the worst one I had was somebody spelled my name wrong on the cover of their of their paper. And that's a that's a problem, you know, because I'm the person you're sending it to. You don't spell my name wrong. And uh, it went downhill from there anyway. So those are the only two things that are due this week. It's it's again, you've got 12 to 13 slides. You can have like I said, you can have a reference slide. If you don't want to put everything and I, I like that too because those full citations, 
especially the APAs take up a lot of room. You know, if you use the short citation on this on your slide and reference that to a reference slide, that's even better. That's a good way to do it <coughs> because it, it cleans up your slides a little bit. And, uh, you know, little things like, um, you know, I'm an old person, so I don't like anything under 12 point type. And I tell people that when they write papers for me is that, uh, hey, I've got to wear glasses and I got to strain to read stuff. So <coughs> don't make it worse for me. Make sure they can read it. You know, there's lots of rules out there that people have for slides and presentations, but the main thing is don't don't over overpopulate things either. Okay, I'm sorry about my cough. It's been it's you know, it's been a couple weeks and I'm on med, so we'll see how things go. Um, an example of a short well, you know, like if you say like um, um, well, what's his name? I've got my textbook. Oh. Well, like uh, I say, uh, green and uh, you know, green and and uh, page number in the um, in the um, in the book year, and so you so I know to go to the appendix. I mean, to the uh, uh, references page, and and um, that's the uh, citation you used. Um, that's what I mean by short citation. It's the sh it's the short one you put at the end of a sentence uh, that you refer to the you're referring to the big one. Okay, well, there's 13 of you. That's a good number, a nice uh, uh, number to have. Um, but really, that's all that's due this week are those two. So do your um, get your discussion done tomorrow night, um, and then work on these slides. And again, take the time to think about it, and and um, when you start putting it together, let somebody else look at it. You know, I always it, it's it, you know that. I can tell you, I've stared at things, and and there's been a mistake in there that's been there four or five times after I've read it, and somebody will walk along and go, "Oh, you did this wrong," you know, because because it, it looks right to you. And, but if if, a, if another person reads it, it's usually uh, they usually catch those kinds of things. But again, use your grammarlies, use your word, use your spellers, use your grammar checkers, because uh, again, those are the little things that drive people crazy. Um, but you also need content. It's, you know, it's got to make sense. Okay, sorry, but no, no, no. Uh, they're supposed to be posting them. Uh, I'll, I'll find out who did last week, and I'll bug them and, and see if they get it posted. How about that? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's it's funny because I record myself sometimes, and that's uh, that's that's what I like to do too because. Not only does, you know, you know I, I like to write the way I read. I like to read uh, or like the way I talk. And it, yeah, it's not academic, but it, but people enjoy it better than, uh, than uh, you know, a, a really boring book. I mean, I have a, I have a brother-in-law who's a, who's an environmental science professor and he's written a whole bunch of books, but I mean, I read the first two pages and fall asleep. They're that bad. Uh, yeah, all that'll be in 12 to 13 slides, Daniel. Uh, 12 slides, one at least one slide for each class, and then you can have an extra slide for your references. Uh, if you if you can't get your references on, if, in other words, if your slide starts to look well, really really clunky and 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 uh, uh, crowded, take your big references and put them onto their own slide. And because uh, this, uh, according to the to the uh, rubric, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to have that 13th slide. Any other questions, problems? Okay, I'm going to save this. I'll see if I can find um, who did the one last week, and we'll get that posted up too. And uh, you know, that, that's about it for this week. And uh, then you'll start into your programs, which I think you'll find will be very interesting. And we have lots of fun. I I, I love the masteries because they write one for me this this month where they take their three goals and look at how that versus what they learned in class and find out if everything matches up, you know. And that's what we try to do is make sure all that stuff matches up. So um, good luck, and um, some of you I may see later, you know, ten months from now in my class. 
Uh, if not, enjoy yourself. And if you have any questions about business plans, I'm S. Burho, S-B-U-R-H-O-E at FullSale.com. And uh, that's, uh, that's uh, you can you're, feel free to ask me any questions or I, I can't grade your assignments, but I can look at uh, some stuff if you have some ideas. Uh, I've done, like I said, I've done business plans for 20 years. Uh, I tell people, I said, I, I got to start a country once. Uh, there's a place called the Principality of New Utopia. And uh, these people were going to start their own country down in the Caribbean Sea. And we worked with them on it. And it never got built. But there are there are things out there like that. Uh, and I've done all kinds of stuff all over the world. So I do business all over the world. So if you have any questions, I'm, you know, I'm more than willing to give you a little time. But just send me an email and I'll uh, I'll chat with you. Okay, that's going to wrap it for this evening. I'll try to get this recording up uh, as quick as I can, and uh, and I'll see if I can find the other ones for uh, that haven't haven't been recorded yet. I saw that only one was up there. <laughs>